Hello. My name is Katrina and I am the Senior Data Technician here at CCR Data. I wish today to show you how to export your constituent data from Razor's Edge. Uh, it may be for purposes of mailing, suspressions, cleaning, uh, or perhaps you just need to take it out for house cleaning. Now the first step to exporting your data, other than obviously implementing a plan, you need to know what data you're exporting, what fields you require. Please take into account any suppressions you may have, i.e. if you already have gone away it's flagged on your database, you certainly won't want to nail them. Uh, deceased records, of course. You may require outputting phone numbers for telephone append or whatever is relevant to your business. Once you are familiar with what you need, the first stage in completing an export is actually completing a query. Now you can do this by selecting query on the left hand side of the screen through the sidebar there. We are going to create a new query and I'm going to create a constituent query. You can create multiple types if you're unfamiliar with Razor's Edge. You can select each object in turn. I'm going to say OK. Now in this case, because we're completing an export, the output does not necessarily matter for us here. It's the criteria, this first tab, that's really important here. So for my particular constituent export, I would like to output those records that have been added in the last week. Select my date added, it pops up nicely here for me. It asks me which operator I require. In this case, because I'm not doing a specific day, i.e. equals today, I would like a week's worth. I scroll down to the between operator and I select Monday as the start of my range and today is still there as the end of my range. So when I say OK, you can see along the top here it's added my criteria. The constituent must have a date added between the dates stipulated there, the 6th and the 10th. I'm going to run my query. It's a very basic query. We have 33 records, which is fantastic. And the dates, if I look at them, I can see that they are within the range I requested. So I'm happy with that. I'm now going to save my query. It is important to mention here that taking the time to name your queries and exports effectively, disregarding the obvious lack of correct casing there, is quite important because, especially if you have various users on the system, you can end up with a multitude of queries or exports that don't have descriptions. Somebody perhaps calls it Dan's export, for example, uh, and it's quite hard to keep track of them and ensure that you only have the current ones in your system. Once your query is saved and you are happy that it's returning the number of results you require, we can move on to the export stage. You select export from the left hand side as we did with the query. You select the new export function. I am creating a constituent export, so I'm happy to leave the selection there on constituent. You can change the export format. It will default to CSV, comma separated values. In this case, I'm very happy with that format. Most databases and data partners will comply with CSV files, uh, but there are options here for access and for word merge files, for Lotus Excel, etc. should you need those. I'm going to select Create now. Now, very importantly, this Include option here defaults as all records. If I were to select Export now, all records in my Razor's Edge database would export. This is not what I intend for this particular case. So when you select Include, you have the option to select Selected Records. You then can look for a query, hence the reason why we created our query earlier. So I'm going to select the query that I set up for this. I'm happy to leave these options here. If you didn't want to include deceased or inactive constituents, obviously you would just untick the box. 
going to go to the output, which is really the main focus of this scenario. Now, for my particular case, I am exporting my constituent data for the purposes of suppression screening. I will need to output the constituent name and address information. I'm also going to output telephone numbers because I wish to see whether my partner can append some telephone numbers to my database for me, but I don't want them to provide me telephone numbers that I already have. So with that in mind, the first thing I'm going to do, which is very important, is output the import ID for the constituent and the constituent ID. It is incredibly important when you're exporting your data and the likelihood is that another data partner will be working on it or perhaps you will need to do some work on it on its return that you output the IDs because if you do not, you may end up with lots of great work being done uh, that you are unable to put back into your database. Now I'm going to need the name, so I'm going to output the title, the first name, and the surname for my constituents. I'm also going to output just one suffix there, and I'm going to include the key indicator and the deceased flag as well. I can ask my data partner to exclude those deceased records for me. I also need the address information, so a little further down, you can see this option here for address. Expand the results. You can expand, uh, provide all addresses. In this case, I'm only interested in the preferred address. And again, the address has its own import ID. Each object has its own unique ID. So I'm going to output the address import ID. And then each line in turn, I want the city, the county, the postcode, and I'm going to do the country as well. I'm also going to output my phone numbers here. So these phones are associated with my preferred address. Again, the, each phone has its own import ID. Now here it's asking how many phones we'd like to export because uh, there may be many, many phones and you may only want to output one number per constituent. I am going to select the particular types I want because obviously we can have email, we can have faxes, you can see um, there are various options in this particular case here. I'm only really interested in the home, the phone and the mobile for this particular scenario and therefore I'm going to select three phones to export which means that you will end up with three lines on the end, one for each phone number and if the phone number is not populated for that particular phone type it will return a blank value. I'm going to OK that. Now I've got my IDs for my constituent, I've got my ID for my address, I've got my ID for my phones. I still need to output the phone type and number. And then I have my name, address and phone numbers ready to output. So I'm just going to save my export. And then I can export now. Again, I would ensure that you have a specific directory, perhaps with dates or certain naming conventions that apply to you. Now I'm just going to open the file so you can have a look and see the res returned results. You saw that it said it had exported 33 records, which obviously tallies with the figure that I got from my query. Let's open the file here. I'm opening this in notepad format. And you can see the headers are all across the top here. So the CN stands for constituent, the bio is for biographical information. So we have the import ID, the cons ID, the title, first name, surname, suffix, etc. as we requested from the export. We also have each value. And my export was successful. Thank you very much for your time.
If you have any further need of CCR services, please see the information to follow. Thank you very much.